we are back working on Musty. Kind of had to take a break there because, well, needed to make some money to pay off my new lathe. So I've been getting these John Deere's ready. I got another John Deere under the blanket there and one in the back. But Musty, just been sitting here. Like, look at this tire. Just clapped out. So we're going to have to get some of that Stan's tire sealant up in this tire pretty quick here. But we're working on brakes now. I finally picked up the metal that I can use in the tube bender to get some tube bent so that I can get a whole new brake lever set up. As you can see, I got it all cut off, some of this tube. So I'm gonna be keeping this little rack here because I like that, but I'm gonna be getting rid of all that back tubing on there and redoing it with one inch tubing. So with the new Rogue Fab tube bender. And then here I'm gonna have a pipe coming up with a brake handle, there, but for now, Let's get on to using this beautiful piece of art. Let's do All it. Right, so we got some tubes bent, as you can see. Some tubes cut out, as you can also see. So the idea is one lever here, sorry, one lever like that, holding the brake, and then that guy's gonna like sit this going into the brake handle. You're gonna see once I get some stuff welded on, but. Right, yeah. so as you can see, Came out pretty damn good. Added in a little drink holder on the side. As you can see, decent. Good welds all around, nice and strong. So now I'm gonna put my seat on and I'm changing up my whole seat. I took off the whole bracketry on the bottom and now I'm actually gonna move it back a bit. So I have to cut out all this other tube, which I was gonna redo anyways. I did all that tube before. Like that was the first rendition of this mower. I had didn't have a tube bender. Beautiful tube bender. Didn't have that in my possession yet, so now I can redo this with the tube bender. But first, we gotta cut out that, take out all that, take out the side, and uh, get a seat fitted in there. Let's do it. All right, so now we are working on the seat. And of course, I'm gonna do some custom brackets. So now I wanna make this seat kind of flip up like how you can see it now. So I'm gonna have to make a bracket on the back and a bracket on the front, but the front bracket will have to be hinged. And the reason it has to be hinged is I need to still be able to get to my gas tank. I was gonna try and do like a nozzle at the side, but it just ain't worth it when I can build just a nice bracket and everything. But it's gonna be nice to move the seat back and everything, and yeah, I'm just liking the way it's going. Let's get into uh, making some parts. First thing I gotta do is make some new pieces on the lathe. So let's get that done. All right, so the first operation we're gonna do here is face the end. So this side I faced off with blade and now I'm gonna flip it around, toss it in the chuck, and we're gonna do it the other side here. All right, so we're gonna bring our little guy in here, tuck that in nice. With both ends faced off, we now can get our measurements off of here and take this to our next piece. All right, so the next thing we actually have to do is get rid of, kind of hard to see, but there's a little ridge always in some of these tubes. This is not a seamless tube here, so there's a seam in there. Oh. All right, so we're moving on to the next operation. Now, I have to turn down this shaft, which is actually my pivot pin. Uh, a couple thou, or a couple mils actually, sorry. So, laid down this piece, this is going to go over this, but the shaft is too big for this guy. The inside of this is like 15.5 I believe, and the outside of this is 16.9 millimeters. So, I just got to take off the difference there on the shaft, and we're good to go. So, pretty sweet setup, super stoked that I'm able to work with this kind of size metal on this kind of lathe. My other lathe was not able to do this, especially with this accuracy. So I'm pretty stoked. 
let's get uh, turning and I'll show you guys what the finished product looks here in a minute. I'd just like to point out here, I'm no expert at all. I'm learning big times. I'm, I'm 20, I just turned 24 like a week ago or whatever, or maybe in a week, I don't even remember. I just turned 24 like I'm saying and I'm learning a lot. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing that I'm able to have this kind of machinery and the mill in the back and like all the other kind of tools, the, the benders, all the grind, like all, just, I love it. It's, it's awesome. But again, I am no pro. I'm only showing you guys what I've, this slight little bit of I've learned and I'm just, I'm just showing you guys because that's, again, I make all these parts, I do all the work, but no pro. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to get making this stuff like a pro and I'll get back to you guys. <laughs> say that's a good fit I'm loving that Woo! damn this new lathe is fire I'm loving this I love when you spend money on things that work good <laughs> okay on to the next step let's go it's the last piece of the puzzle make it nice threadable there so I tap that to an M6 boom Works awesome. All right, well, let's make something cool out of this now. Peace. So all that freaking work, and this is what I end up with. Boom. Now, we can flip our seat up, we can lock it in, and we can place this down. So I'll show you, this is gonna get welded onto the actual motor frame, and then, uh, like, the, like this pin is, you just pull it out, boom, take your seat off. I'm gonna make two mounting bolts, or mounting brackets for the back, but I mean, Check that out, pretty decent. Nice fun project for the lathe too, so rock on. Let's get on to the next piece or get that at least welded on there. Okay, back in the garage. I've been waiting to do this for so long. So let's get on to bending some tube with the Rogue Fab Bender. Get rid of that shitty contraption and get on. The seat's looking awesome. I love the placement. Again, we moved it lower and a little bit back because I got I'm six foot one ish and I've got pretty long legs, so I like my leg room. That's why my steering wheel sits up pretty high, as you probably know. Probably net oost. All right, let's do this. I do love these digital tools. Oh. Tells you the angle along with the scale, but it tells you uh, the exact angle uh, instead of giving you backlash. So now I know exactly where to go to get my uh, 20. I am going a little higher than 20 degrees, but oh, I just love this tool so much. It works so good. It does some amazing bending. And it's gonna make this mower look like it's, well, it's top notch. Let's get it done. I wish I got more tube to do on here, but I really don't. 
I got smaller pieces too, but I'm kind of running out of space. Just because I'm also kind of worrying about weight at this point. I've added a lot of metal to this mower and it's getting heavy. And uh, I'm trying to be at a good weight ratio. I'm going to weigh it one of these days and see what it actually weighs. But I don't know. I'm just got to be cautious about my weight. Anyways though, besides all that kind of stuff, we've reduced a bit of weight with take cutting out metal and stuff like that. But still we, we've added a bunch because all the tube I'm adding in is 095 wall, which is definitely thicker than what I was using before. And bigger, it's one inch as well. Anyways, looking great, I'm loving it. Next thing we actually have to do, now that the seat's all built, we built that nice, nice little hinge set up on there for the front of it, and then we just got the little lock nut on the back here. So, nice and solid. I'm gonna have to fix my seat up here a little bit, it's a little wobbly, and then uh, that little bit of play there is the actual seat. When I rolled the first time, or the second time, or whatever it was, I rolled right over, and crunched the seat in pretty good, like it tacoed itself in. So I was able to pull it back out straight, but it's still, it's got some movement in it. Anyways, so the next thing I need to do is get the brake lever and the hydraulics assembly uh, ran through the mower and onto the brake caliper, which still needs to be installed as well. Um, the biggest issue I'm running into is the clamp block here is made for like a three quarter inch pipe and I'm running one inch as a handle. So I'm gonna have to uh, machine that out to a one inch or build something, but we'll see. I think I can machine it out. Okay, let's get on to getting this on there. Fuck yeah. time to go over this hydro brake setup. So I was able to uh, machine out that fitting to fit on here nice and snug. And I drilled out a hole in the frame and put a rubber bushing in there for my nice hydro line. So this is a front brake for a uh, geo quad or pit bike, like a mini dirt bike or mini quad. Uh, it's just a cheap Chinese handbrake, but it worked unreal they work great these are they're hydraulics hydraulics just works good especially on the mower setups so i got the the hydro handbrake and then the hydro line coming down through the frame the frame there and then down underneath and then it pops out as you can see i got the other end so what's this connect up to i'll show you that right. now so right here so as you can see a little bit of custom stuff so on the peerless transaxles, like the 1200 and the 2300, they come with this big dick, <laughs> this big disc brake. And uh, I've ha I machined this down. I put in the lathe and actually took off a few mils, or actually like half an inch off of uh, the outside, the diameter of that. And uh, just to make it a little bit smaller, so I had some more ground clearance. And then this big oval shaped piece is to uh, cover that brake so that I can smash it on rocks. So. There is the caliper. It is stock. I just drilled out the mounting holes so I can run some 3 8 bolts through there. All right. So nothing too crazy, but essentially it's very crazy because it works stupidly well. So this gets bolted up onto the frame like so in the corresponding holes. And then does its brake job clamps onto the disc and uh, slows down the transaxle. So this is the uh, brake input shaft or the output, whatever you want to call it. And there you go, my disc, my caliper, and the guard. So I'm gonna install all this and then I'll show you what that looks like. But again, hydro brake setups, they work stupidly well and I literally just showed you the whole way of how you do it and how to install it essentially. So it's not a hard upgrade, plus it was about 50 or 60 bucks to get the parts and have them to your doorstep all you got to do is make some brackets and uh, get to working so let's do it let's get it installed all right so installed we're looking at that painted it red just so you know don't put fingers in there or else they will get cut off all right let's get this uh hydro line uh routed and uh hooked up and see how she uh, works i guess we got to bleed it too so we got to bleed it and then see how it works Rock on. So we're finally getting down to some fun stuff. Not really fun, but it's exciting. So I got my 80 weight 90 fluid here, and it's going to be going into the gearbox. 
So I got a nice uh, pump set up here so I can just pump that fluid right into the, uh, the box there. So I'm gonna get doing that and then uh, the next thing I think we're gonna try is to actually fire this thing up and get some tires spinning and some belts moving. So that's big exciting and yeah, let's get to it. Unreal. Anyone else filling up their gearboxes? spacers are on and damn check that out it's like half the tire outside compared to uh not oh i'm loving how that looks unreal musty's actually in line with the tires again Woo! let's get on to the next one and she is wide again Woo! i am fully in love with how this is looking if i step back Oof, she's looking hot. Can't really get much for a front view just because I'm so up in the garage. But you can see there's some tire poking now. Definitely going to have to look into some mud flaps and some tree kickers too. Some tube coming out to the side here because I got a lot of tire sticking out. But I'm running two inch Jeep wheel spacers on the rear there. That's what got me that extra two inches on either side. And I might go down to one inch just to... Uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm gonna run this though, see how it works. All right, so it's time to bleed the brakes. Now, it ain't the easiest process with one person, but it can be done. Uh, that's why I got this taped on. Run into the issue, if you're mounting your brake like I am, uh, horizontal or vertically, um, you're not gonna be able to bleed it because you need to fill it from the t side, or which is the top, but I'm, it's the side when it's upper. You, yeah, you get what I mean. Anyways, so, tape it onto something, grab another piece of tube, clamp it onto that, so that you can just sit here going like this instead of upright and at stupid angles. But uh, once you do fill it up with brake fluid, you can put it at any angle you want, as long as it's sealed. So it's a great system once you uh, get it in the good state. But anyways, let's fill this up and start putting some pressure in the lines and bleeding it. Let's do it. All right, so I got it done. Check it out. Can I slowly apply them? So it took about, I'd say, literally double the time, which was about 25 minutes. Normally it would probably take me about 10 to 15 if I had someone doing the pumping. But, so what I did is I sat this at a nice level-ish spot, just taped it on, like I said, put it on a piece of pipe. So I started off with just opening up the brake caliper where you put the brake juice in, right on the top here. Fill that up, pump, 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 and you just got to keep doing that until you've primed the system. And then once you've actually got the system full, continue to do it over and over again until you just it just feels good and uh, I'm gonna probably check this tomorrow tonight I'm gonna leave so when I prime the system pressure it I'll just grab a clamp here throw it over lock it in like that now my system has pressure in it I'd go down to the uh, caliper itself a little 8 mil crack the the bleeder valve Boom, a little bit of juice comes out, crack it back, come back over here, pump, 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 repeat the system. Many times over until it's shooting clear, no more uh, air bubbles in the line, and uh, you'll end up with a very strong system. I know this is, and you'll see out on the trail tomorrow, that I won't be able to move this tire. It is, yeah, no, it is locked in there. The hydro brakes just work so good. I just want to say, people, if you aren't doing this, get to it, because you definitely need to. I'm gonna get this mounted back up on this little pole here and uh, fire this thing up, I think. See what happens. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, we got some freaking good news, people. Everything's working perfect. I had to do a little bit of adjustments on the clutch system, but uh, that I had to incorporate for a burning in of a new belt. So one tip here, when you put a brand new belt on, it's gonna grab hard right off the bat. So what I like to do is put it into my second gear or like a somewhat fast gear. That's not really that fast. Enough to move the belt at a good speed. And then I ride the clutch boat halfway and just let it burn off, off the belt and then it will run just perfect. Or sometimes if I'm out on the trail and I put a new belt on, I'll just put her in second and just go for a haul. That uh, low yeah. belt will burn it in just fine. So, quick tip there. Anyways, I'm working on a few things. I'll show you what I have been doing and, and I'm loving it. Mm -hmm. 